My entire life was shaped by my diagnosis. If I was only going to be here for a short time, I needed to leave my mark. I needed to leave an imprint behind. I needed to make a difference because you want people to know that you were here and that you mattered. Jaden is my MPN hero because he's always there for me, supporting me, lifting me up on my bad days, pushing me on my worst days, and enjoying my good days. The real heroes are the patients. The patients and the caregivers that helped them through this, all the folks that take care of all the nitty gritty of getting these patients the care they need. Compassion is the wish to see no one suffering. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. I don't consider myself a hero. Many people have said to me, oh, that's such a wonderful thing to do. And in my mind, it's it's what you do. It's, it's what you do for other people. I cannot say thank you enough for the rest of my life. And, um, you know, she's the reason I'm here. She's the reason my kids have their mom. She is the whole reason. I really believe he's a hero to so many others. Not only has he benefited my journey, but he's done so for so many other patients. Nick is a caring and soft, wonderful person. And when he takes care of me, you know, I know one thing's for sure, nothing bad's gonna happen to me on his watch. I can't imagine my life without him and I, I wouldn't wanna think about it for a second. For him to have some type of normalcy, he could be normal with me. He didn't have to worry about, you know, what he was allowed to eat or where he was allowed to go or who he had to be. He didn't have to feel sick. He didn't have to feel fragile with me. He just felt like mad. The work that I've been doing has purely been just out of my own passion and the goodness of my heart. So I've been um, truly honored, um, even though I still think that our patients are the true heroes in all of this. I told to myself, okay, Maida, you have two options here, either feel sorry for yourself and do nothing about it or go out there and make a difference. I decided the second one. I consider myself a person who has been diagnosed with a disease who decided that I just wanted to do something about it. And that's what Hike MF is all about, to find a cure. I'm just a patient living with a disease. I'm no doctor, I'm no nurse, I'm no scientist, I'm nothing. I'm just Jean that's out there trying to bring peace to other people's lives. The most satisfying thing is really seeing the science advanced, which then has an impact on the lives of patients with MPNs. She had a vision of physicians and patients working together, talking outside of the exam room, and really collaborating. Patients provide the sense of urgency. Physicians provide knowledge about the clinical space. And researchers say, I've got this great idea. So I think by the three groups working together, we get something that's likely to be more effective over the long term. My work really focuses on, on the translational part of, of this process, to rapidly and effectively translate something from the laboratory into a clinical trial, which for me is really exciting because it melds the science, which I've always enjoyed, with the clinical care and the, and the innovation of treatment. My early work was to try to help with the validation of symptom assessment tools, things like the myeloproliferative neoplasm symptom assessment form or MPNSAF, to really try to understand the symptom biology. My primary goal is to try to quantify the burden that the MPN patients experience. When I did the bone marrow biopsy, that's when they found out I had ET. He was eight years old. Canon has entered a research program 
Dr. Cousine is a doctor for children. She's trying to find a cure. So I wanted to do it not just to help myself, but to help everybody else that has ET. The diseases that we work with are really serious, and the public, I don't think, realizes that. The better educated patients are, the better quality of life they're going to have because they have an understanding of what tomorrow looks like. No one had been informing and educating the public on MPN. So I thought, the public needs to be told about MPN. There is such a thing as Mary Paul Nancy MPN. So I wanted to create a website where patients could go as the first place and take some of the best articles and videos and that sort of thing and uh, make PV Reporter the starting point for NPN patients. In 2005, Esther and I started Patient Power. Then we started going to medical conventions and doing live audio broadcast. Now we do live video broadcasting for patients all over the world. Hi, I'm Jeff. Hi, Summer. And we're your MPN Network Managers for the Patient Empowerment Network. So we make little videos every month about different things. We try to make them informative and humorous and little stories telling about how we're handling the challenges that myelofibrosis presents. So my organization is named MPN Advocacy and Education International. And the international piece was very important to me to advocate on behalf of all people in all nations and make sure that they do get the care, the quality care that they deserve. I just want to make sure that patients who are less fortunate than myself, who have a, a myeloproliferative neoplasm, still have the same access to care that I do. And as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'm going to fight for every last MPN patient. It's extremely fulfilling to be a part of a young patient's MPN journey. I love my job. I have fantastic patients. And I think I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, which is great. You understand their disease. And then to be able to guide them toward the right strategy is really very rewarding. You're really doing something that's going to improve the quality of their life. And I think that's what keeps us going and keeps me very excited to be in this field. There's been dramatic discoveries in the last 10 years, spectacular advances uh, in uh, both the understanding and therapy of the myeloproliferative neoplasms. Patients dealing with these diseases have a, a, a tough, tough challenge and I try to give them hope that we have ways currently and hopefully new ways yet to come to control the symptoms of their disease. I believe we were the first one to discover something called uniparental disomy, which contributed to discovery of JAK2, and we also contributed to understanding that there is a single stem cell which causes the disease. The JAK2 mutation wasn't discovered until 2005. And so the amount of knowledge that we now have compared to then is, is significantly greater. And so I really enjoy being able to not only be part of a community that's making those discoveries, but also to be able to talk to my patients about this, to really give them hope. So clinical research is really what drives everything we do here, because without clinical research, we don't move further. Well, what makes the MPN Research Foundation so special is it was started 15 years ago by patients for patients so that they could have a direct impact on the research that is being done to help save their lives. Those are lofty goals, but in order to try to solve these problems, you have to have a critical mass of people who are highly invested uh, and passionate about this. And that's part of what the foundation does, is bring these people together. I'd always wanted to do something for the greater good, and now there was a chance to do that and also maybe help myself and other patients to really fill a gap in medical research. 
I try to give my MPN patients hope by encouraging them with all the new research that's happening in the field. I find that when patients are educated about their disease, they can participate in shared decision making, and that engagement improves outcomes. Being able to manage this and not let it get the best of me, uh, that was really the pivot to become uh, an advocate for all MPN patients. We're a small community, the MPN community, but we're a strong community, and we need each other. When a patient needs something or asks me to do something, I won't stop until I can make that happen for them. I really try to encourage them to hook into things like support groups and or other patients that have been walking down that same path and not feel so alone. I reached out to the local cancer centers and I handed out flyers and lo and behold, somebody called me and said, I'm a patient who has the same thing. I didn't know there was anybody else around here with my low fibrosis. And then all of a sudden there was another one and another one and another one. And so we started meeting once a month for lunch. He shared his experience very um, publicly on the MPN forum. Anytime somebody wanted to talk to him, he would spend hours on the phone with people. He just gave himself to people. It was just his natural way. What Ashley did because, because of the love of her father, I think, and because of her desire to do good for a broader community is what I think it was a compelling reason as to why I wanted to nominate her. People come into the group right where I was when I started, and they have all of the same fears that I had. And I like being there to answer their question. The great thing about being on the forum is the community. We have people on every continent except Antarctica. We know each other, and we know what's going on in the other person's life, but it's a wonderful, caring community. I think it's important that people provide some value to society, either by just providing better care or better knowledge, but also showing that you care.